Welcome everyone to episode number 49 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. This is the Creator Series. Today I welcomed a Philadelphia native. He goes by the name of King Champs. He's a really dope MC. Uh, he reached out to me, I think in December. He sent me his compilation album from Dead Wrong Records. And I checked it out and I was a really big fan, honestly. Uh, very lyrical rap. Uh, he explained that him and his brother have been rapping for, I think, for probably for the last 20 years. They put out... A project back in 2012 which was I think their first effort he kind of goes into a little bit of detail on that um, overall this episode was just very very good for advice for young artists I feel like it was very eye-opening even for me uh, from Champs's experiences as far as you know really just putting in the work every single day uh, and just not stopping the grind you know what I mean and having a real plan as an independent artist and really having a vision for his label and where he wants to take it in the future um i really enjoyed you know his outlook on that because and i mentioned it in this episode that's really what this show is all about it's to give you know people that are either just starting out or who kind of need some guidance kind of give them you know a different outlook from someone that's doing what they are already uh and just hopefully you know guide them in the right direction uh other than that, I enjoyed, you know, our, before we started recording this episode, we had a good talk about Cowboys football. I'm a big Dallas Cowboy fan, and so is he, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, we talked for like 20 minutes on that before we even got into this episode. But, um, you know, I appreciate him for, like I said, even just sending me music, and I thought this conversation was very incredible, and I wish Champs the best of luck and look forward to the music that he has coming out, which he also highlights at the end of the episode, so... Uh, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, welcome everyone to episode number 49 here on the Proven Knowledge Podcast. This is the Creator Series. Today we have a Philadelphia native. He's a really dope MC. Goes by the name of King Shamps. How are you, man? Hey, hey what's up, man? I'm glad to uh, be on here today, man. Just, um, just excited, man. Just excited to kick it off with you, man. We've been we've been playing this for a minute. Absolutely. So. And I, yeah, you sent me your music, I think, in what, December. And so that's kind of where yeah. everything started. And I checked out like that compilation album and everything. And we'll get into that. But first of all, I want you to kind of explain to people who might not have heard of you before or maybe are new to your music, kind of how you got into music, uh, where your name came from, all the basic information. Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, um, I'm King Chance. I'm from West Philly. Um, you know, um, me and my brother Zahn. That's my blood brother, same mom, same dad. Um, we basically formed Dead Wrong Records um, in our teenage years, just um, fucking around, trying to go in and see where we could go with it until we realized that we actually had some talent. Um, we actually had some organization abilities, and we actually have a vision for what we want to go in ahead and do. Um, Dead Wrong Records' kind of mission statement is that we're a hospital. Um, we kind of make sure that the MC is revitalized in a way you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like it's so many people that don't focus on the skill of mc and it actually making dope content that that's our strong suit we believe in dope song structure we believe in lyrics that actually mean something you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's just not a bunch of bullshit you know what i mean so um Dead Wrong Records is something that we started. We just dropped on it. Did. That's been doing some great numbers independently. Um, and what kind of got me started in rap, um, to be honest, is I come from Philly. It's the home of the spitters, man. I mean, everybody fucking raps. The reference got bars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whereas, like, every motherfucker raps here. So um, you're already kind of immersed in the culture from an early age. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, being influenced by the legends like, you know, um, watching Dipset and 50 and, you know, Rough Riders, rest in peace to X, um, you know, all of these different legends. Um, and then studying the greats as well um, that came even before them. We talk about Jay and uh, Nas and Big and Pac and Mob and Wu, you know, all of these guys, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg. So we have a love for the culture um, in a lot of different ways. And we just want to kind of continue that, um, that on. Um, as far as, um, what was the other question you said? Um, basically like my, my origin my name, um, is Arabic, um, champs would mean leader, um, in Arabic. Um, and that's how I, I feel, you know what I mean? I feel like I'm leading a, uh, new religion of music. I feel like, um, we're leading a new sound, 
You know what I mean? I feel like we're actually blending something old, something new, some borrowed, some blue in a way where it's like, okay, we we have new age production, but that old school way of emceeing and talking like that gangster shit on record. Hmm. You know what I mean? With bars, we're, we're implementing. So um, hopefully I didn't want it, but I, I wanted to make sure I, I, I answered everything on bulletin board type shit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's cool about your name too. I didn't know like kind of where that came from and everything and i know what drew me to you like when you sent because i like i appreciate when people reach out to me and just send me stuff randomly and they don't even know me and they're just like check out my stuff but you did it in a great way you know what i mean like it wasn't spammy it wasn't like some person just came my dms and just was like check out my shit man it was like you explained it and everything and i could tell you were very like confident in your music and everything so i like listen to it and that's like what drew me to what i heard was like very lyrically driven and I'm like, I could tell this guy cares about the music that he's doing and everything. And I didn't know that Azam was your brother, so that's kind of cool. Because I had yeah. seen that you guys put out, like, an album in 2012 as well that was out there uh, that was yeah. kind of on, like, iTunes and Apple Music and stuff. So that's pretty cool um, that you guys have been doing it for that long and everything and continue to, uh, like, make great quality music. And like you said, evolve it because you have, like you said, the the sound is becoming more modern but the message and the lyrics and everything is still the same. You know what I mean? And you're just continuing that story that uh, you guys are developing and everything. So that's pretty cool. So, you know, the last year has been pretty crazy as far as like, you know, COVID and everything and kind of the situation for artists has changed as far as where they've been able to work from home or work in the studio. So for you personally, have you been more in the studio lately? Or are you doing recording at home and just writing? Like, what has that been like for you over the last year? Well, it's been um, it's been very, very interesting to say the least. I think for everyone, um, everybody's living habits have changed mm-hmm. drastically um, within a year's time. You know, um, a lot of different things have occurred. So, um, with that being said, you have to start making an adjustment, especially in the business that we're in. Um, and I feel that we've kind of done everything, all of the above. I guess to answer the question where, you know, we've kind of been doing a lot of writing from home, going back and forth to the studio, trying to um, structure everything and try to control what we can control, basically. You know, um, there's not a lot of shows going on, um, even radio shows, podcasts that may have been recorded in different places or more um, from what we're doing from a Zoom type of uh, time. So um, we just kind of made the adjustment, but I don't think the formula has changed at all as far as like creating the records. Uh, me and my brother Azam, we actually sit down and craft the records and have ideas of who we want to put on records. You know what I'm saying? Like really, really A and R, and we use that as a strength. Um, so we just been trying to control what we can control, bro. You know what I mean? Um, I feel that um, this is a reset time um, for the hustlers. You know, people like me and you, where it's like we're putting our name together, we're grinding every day. Mm -hmm. Um, Once the country opens back up, everybody's kind of reset. Everybody's kind of hitting the ground running at the same time. Of course, not maybe from a financial standpoint, but from a business standpoint, if you've been building during this pandemic, you're going to flourish and prosper, I truly believe. So that's kind of been the motto. I, I said it in a um, recent interview. I said, we're building a dynasty in a pandemic. And I feel like all of the hustlers and all of the different people in our business and line of work, um, we should all be doing it, mm-hmm. putting that grind and using this time. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what we've been doing, bro. Um, just kind of using the pandemic to our advantage, um, making lemons out of lemonade, basically. <laughs> I, I always thought that was the best mentality to have with this whole situation because I know a lot of people, they they struggled with that, being able to overcome that. It was like, might have lost their job, might have lost a lot of different things during the pandemic, and it was definitely a rough time. But I feel like the best thing you could do is just really focus in on what you're trying to do with your life if you're if you're able to and just really go hard at it, like you said, and just really lock in on uh, what is important to you and how you're going to move your career past this. Uh, if you're able to and everything. So I think that's really good to hear that you guys came out of it with a more positive outlook, uh, even in such a time that was crazy and not, and even still, we're still in the pandemic technically. So, you know, every day things are changing. So I think the best thing you can do is exactly what you just said, which is just keep your head down, keep working, stay as focused as possible and just see what comes out of it. You know what I mean? So that's definitely super important. 
Now, I know you just mentioned a lot of incredible rappers at the beginning of this that, you know, you kind of came up on. Um, but is there anyone else maybe that you didn't mention or that you want to go into more detail about that when you were, you know, young, you kind of listened to them and you were like, that makes me want to rap. That makes me want to, you know, do music myself. Is there anyone that you could think of that was like that one or two people that really inspired you to get creative yourself uh, in hip hop, essentially? Oh, for sure. And that's, that's a great question, bro. Um, I can go back probably to the moment where I decided I was going to rap. I decided that I wanted to be a CEO of my own label, become an entrepreneur. I remember seeing Fade to Black. If you remember that DVD with uh, Jay-Z. And it was basically his quote-unquote retirement album. I mean, the motherfucker put out maybe nine albums after that. But so, that was like, so this was like 03 then, right? Around then. Probably. Yes. Yeah. Around that time. Around that time. Bro, like when I legit saw Jay-Z get on that stage and see how many celebrities and, and different people admired his work um, and were there to kind of celebrate that album, I said, that's what I want to do. Um, even, I think, not even in hip-hop, but I look at someone like a Jimi Hendrix. Mm. Um, when I saw the Isle of White, um, in 1970 and that was pretty much his last performance visually um, and saw how crazy the crowd was like how ridiculous it was I was like yo that's what I want to do um, from an entrepreneur uh, aspect I felt like looking at people like Puff Daddy Master P um, Steve Stout um, you know especially Suge Knight you know what I mean, and Death Row, and, and what they were able to do, and looking at the positives of what they were able to do um, in the business and leave a legacy, I feel like they influenced me from that entrepreneurial uh, spirit, but um, rappers, it had to be like Jay-Z and Big, um, um, Nas for sure, uh, Illmatic was an album that changed my life in the way I wrote, <laughs> you know, like I had never heard like that rapid fire delivery and the way he was depicting where I come from, the ghetto, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And um, when he was doing it, it, it just kind of captivated me in a way, you know what I'm saying? And it just kind of made me say, you know what, how can I blend the two and be uh, not only a rapper, but an entrepreneur, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Being a CEO. So like those are definitely some of my influences for sure. And, and what got me started. Mm -hmm. It was so cool to see Nas finally get that Grammy this year and see him finally get like, all that attention. Because it's crazy that, like you said, Illmatic, it's one of the most talked about albums in like hip-hop history, really, in music history. But for a lot of people, it's like, ever since then, Nas hasn't been able to have an album that was that talked about, you know what I mean? And like to see uh, what happened last year and like to see like the King's Disease album do so well and really just impact a lot of people in a positive way during like the pandemic and everything i saw so many people that are like this is like a new beginning for nas you know what i mean like it's almost like yeah. he has the energy of a new artist again and like just to see him get that grammy that was incredible honestly so uh, it was man. yeah i was excited because it's just like damn bro like this motherfucker's put out classic after classic after classic this motherfucker's never had a whack verse and you're finally giving him the grammy but Hey, better late than never. So yeah. I was I was happy for him. That's a testament too to like even when he did all that, he just kept going, you know what I mean? And it took that long for him to get something like that. So it's like if Nas had to wait that long, it's almost like what else are, you know, any of us doing, you know what I mean? Like we should just keep working every single Word. day cuz you never know when that time's going to come for those things to come to you. It could be way down the line. But you'll never know if you just stop working, you know what I mean? You just stop doing what you're doing and even like jay-z and everything like he's never stopped and it's a good thing that he didn't retire because like look at all the stuff he's done since then as a businessman as yeah. a musician like all that stuff wouldn't have happened if he just said nah i'm done you know what i mean and just like hung it up so i feel like the greats they they just can't stop honestly like it's just in them to just continuously be creative and just push boundaries everywhere they go so that's incredible just to watch all those guys do their thing still is there anyone out, sure. of, out of those people or maybe someone else that you'd ever want to do a record with or maybe an album or just anything in general I mean being honest if I could get a song with each of those fucking guys I would <laughs> you know what I mean like I um 
admire their work. Um, I admire what they were able to accomplish, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, Um, in our culture. And like you said, to still be at the age that they are and still pushing boundaries and opening up more doors and culture for us, um, that's important. You know what I mean? You know, when you think about it, it's like, damn, you know, these guys have opened up doors and really made it so people like us can walk in a lot easier. You know what I'm saying? Like they've trailblazed and, and found different ways to open up different opportunities. Whereas back in the day, you know, um, you look at people like Cool Herc and all these guys that made the art form. Um, to where is that now? Within a, a 40 year span, um, is amazing. It's incredible. You know what I mean? Um, to see that. So you know, those guys, I would definitely do a record for all of those dudes if I could. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I respect what they did on the records, but most importantly, what they did off the record for what they did for the culture. So uh, all of those dudes, if I can get a verse, you're damn right. I'm gonna get that motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> you know, you know who else I could probably hear you doing like a like a track with? Maybe like Jada Kiss or like. Benny or anyone from Griselda would be pretty dope. Word, word. I respect all of them. Jada's a legend to me, man. You know what I mean? Jada's mm-hmm. right there. Um, Jada's never had a whack verse. I haven't heard one from him. Um, and I definitely respect what them brothers is doing up in Buffalo because it's the East Coast thing. Um, I respect them. They pushing the culture forward. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In a lot of different ways. So it's, it's always good to see that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, shit, I'm, I'm open to whoever wants to work, whoever want to keep it real. This is about keeping it real. That's the that's my thing. You know what I mean? If you keep it real, we can do things. If you on bullshit, sign our motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that, honestly, for real. Absolutely. So, as far as, like, all the music you've had out, you know, so far, it could be the Dead Wrong Records album. It could be, you know, some of your older work. Um, what do you think is the most memorable song or album or anything that you've put out so far that you kind of remember the process of making it and it was kind of a special song or moment for you? Oh, man, that's a great, great question. I love, like, great questions that make you, like, think. That, <laughs> that, that's great journalism there. You know what I mean? I try my um, best. I, I, I do my best. I try here. Listen, bro, you're not trying if you're doing it. <laughs> you're doing it. You know what I mean? Motherfuckers do a lot of trying and don't do a damn thing. You're doing it. So I appreciate that. Um, um, a memorable moment. You know what? Um, I think I would have to go back to the first project that you had mentioned. Um, and I'm going to kind of tie it all together in a way if I can. And, um, I was dealing with a lot of different things. I was heavy in the streets during that time. I was actually fighting a case that could have gave me a lot of time. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And um, that first album, I was doing it out on bail. Um, I was recording and going back and forth to court and everything. And I felt like a lot of the different things I wrote from an emotional aspect um, was in it. You know what I mean? Like it was in that project and I was in a different um, emotional and mental point in my life where it was just like, I didn't know what the fuck was about to happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, through the strength of God and through the strength of um, just good people around me, I was able to go through my situation where I needed to go through it. Um, but I feel like for me, that kind of changed like my outlook on music. And then I said I was going to go ahead and take it serious because it was very therapeutic for me. Um, and kind of the set way into this project, our grandmother passed away, um, in August of last year. Um, and her being a big part of our family, that was a huge blow and nobody really know, really knew what to do. Um, except go into music. So Dawn and the Dead, we were recording like right after our grandmother passed. And I feel like it, that's, kind of having a, um, a memory too because we were able to push through adversity. Mm-hmm. I feel like with each project, um, it was some kind of thing that was trying to hold us back from gaining what we needed to gain. And um, that's why I would have to say those are the memorable projects. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, just because 
of what was going on behind the scenes that a lot of people didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? That it was a lot of things going on with me and my personal life that we were able to push through. You know what I mean? So I would definitely have to say those two because they came in pivotal points where it's like, you know, bro, we see so many different people in this world that um, aren't emotionally strong enough to handle a lot of shit. And, and, and the thing is, I'm not downing those people um, at all, but you have to find that will in that way. And like you said, the greats, they just, they just keep pushing. You know what I mean? They keep pushing. And I feel like those projects, uh, they are definitely examples of that. You know what I mean? So to answer the question, I feel like those two um, definitely would be the most memorable for me, mm -hmm. for sure. That to me, too, is like, that's really how powerful music is. You know what I mean? Like, you can take all the strife and all the struggle and just put it into music, and that's where the healing can come from. Like, it's that powerful. And to take that story... And those stories from your personal life, put them on a record. Now they relate to someone else you've never met somewhere in the world. You know what I mean? On like a personal level for them. Like what else has the power to do that? You know what I mean? That's why like, that's why we do what we do. You know what I mean? Is exactly that. It's just like the human connection. Like no matter where you're from, you can relate to those stories. Like it's just so incredible. So thank you for sharing that because that's, it's very it's very cool to hear those types of stories to where, you know, you took something that was very personal and just put it in the song and it's just is what it is and that's it that's where the best art comes from, you know what I mean? It's just like those experiences. It's just it's crazy to me. But that's why we that's why I love it so much. So that's awesome. So this could be your brother or maybe someone else. Is there anyone who has been like a favorite collaborator of yours that you just love working with them. You have a great relationship and you guys just have such a good workflow to going together over the years. Oh yeah. It's definitely gotta be him. Definitely gotta be my brother. Um, because of us being extremely close, um, we've been raised that way. Um, that's, um, it's something that's very, um, big in our family mm -hmm. is to be close and be unified. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's something that we try to, do what did wrong is we treat everything like family. You know what I'm saying? We see anybody that, you know, we got love for, we greet them with a hug. How you doing? You know what I mean? What's up with you? How's everything? How's your family? How's everything going on? So family is very important to us. Um, so when you start talking about um, us working on records and things, we damn near think just alike. So he'll hear something that I hear and say, you know what, bro, let's do this hook. Or, you know, um, the way you phrase that rhyme, um, maybe you phrase it this way, maybe we can get a better effect out of it. Or I'll say, you know what, bro, I hear that hook. Let's tighten that up a little bit. Let's work on it. And we push each other to extent because we want to be great. You know, um, that's what pushes us and that's what drives us is that motivation where it's like, yo, I want to be great, man. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't do this shit just to be a regular motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, we're doing this shit. So, you know, when we die, when we pass on, it's like, yo, you won't remember him. You won't remember Anthony. You won't remember me. Fuck you talking about. You know what I'm saying? So we look at things that kind of way. So when we're working on music and putting these things together, um, we're looking to be great. So it's always a good collaboration. And we're always um, in love with being creative. Um we're both classically trained um, musicians. I played the piano, he played the drums. Um, so we know music. Um, my mother and father played every fucking thing from um, the Jackson 5 to um, Pearl Jam to fucking Hendrix to Tina Marie to Rick James to fucking, um, you know, Brian Eno. You know what I mean? Like, listening to every fucking thing. Mm -hmm. So, you'll hear a lot of different influences in our music. I mean, one minute you may hear Nas, but then you'll hear Three Sits Mile for you. You'll hear Master P. You know what I mean? Like, you'll hear all of these different things in the gumbo pot. So, he has to be my favorite collaborator because it's like, he's the only one that produced, like, any of my records. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you look at a King Champs, like, record, he's fucking produced it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that kind of self-explanatory, but in a way, a lot of people don't know, like, our process and how we put things together, and, and, and that's kind of what drives us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's to be great, and um, we always come up with 
dope things and new dope ideas to present to people. Yeah. That's got to make it super organic, too, because you guys have known each other, you know, your whole lives, like, from the beginning. Uh, so it's like, it probably just comes so naturally to just be like, you want to do this? Yeah, let's do this. So let, let's go. And let's just do this, make this song, make this album, like, whatever. So that's super awesome, too. And a lot of people, like, I think the struggle with music makers and, like, their families is sometimes, like, their family might not understand what they're doing or might not see it from that perspective because they're like, you know, you're trying to do music. What the hell is that? That's not like a career. That's not this, that, and the third. But it's it's like yeah. if you have someone like a sibling or your parents or whatever that are there and they already know exactly what you're doing, it's like that has to be a sigh of relief as well to be like, okay, they they see what I'm doing and I'm just going to keep going because, you know, they understand. So that's – it is what it is. You know what I mean? So – that's that's definitely got to be really good to have as well, honestly, and probably likewise oh, yeah. for your brother too. I I bet he feels exactly the same way. Is like, if you guys ever have a struggle, like with your career or anything, you can just come to the other person and just kick ideas and just do what you got to do. So that's super. That's super uh, awesome. Absolutely, and it, it's cool because, like I said, I didn't know that he was your brother. I had just seen him on all these records, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, is he just like a frequent collaborator? Or but now I understand. Like now it makes a lot more sense. So yeah, that's cool. I get that a lot, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. I get that a lot. They're like that's your brother. Like yeah, like my little brother. Like I'm the oldest, so you know, um, he comes up with the records. Um, he's producing them top to bottom. You know what I'm saying? And uh, really putting us all into it. So, yeah, man, we, we just try to do the damn thing for sure. <laughs> Your guys' sound, too, is just incredible. Like, it's it's that really raw hip-hop that gets me Thank going you, for real. So, like I said, that's what drew me to your sound. So, that's awesome. So, as far as, let's say, the music business, right, is there any piece of advice you've been given about how to approach the music business that you kind of ran with that might have helped you out and maybe uh you know saved you some trouble heartache as far as like getting into the wrong situation um to be frank and very honest everybody learned on the whim bro nobody told me a goddamn thing mm, i feel to that. Be very honest. <laughs> i feel that bro <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, kind of no. like we learned as we went I'm pretty sure you can attest to these kinds of things where it's like yes. man yeah like oh. damn I wish I wanted to talk to this motherfucker over here <laughs> lord have mercy like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's certain things and, and I feel like we've learned along the way um, we knew that we wanted to have a label we knew that we wanted to change culture. We knew that we wanted to make a certain sound that would stand out and stand the test of time. So we just really have been running straight forward with ideas. Now, if I was going to give advice to somebody that's in the grind and be like, yo, listen, make sure that you have a game plan. Make sure that you believe in yourself always no matter whatever the fuck somebody's telling you because people will tell you anything because they're scared that they they don't have the balls to do what you're doing because if they did they would be doing it mm-hmm. so remember that from first and fucking foremost and make sure you have a plan to execute it make sure you're organized and have something that people are going to fuck with don't sit there now think about it right you got different producers and rappers who are in the game. And a lot of these guys sound the same. You can't tell one from the other. I mean, it's no secret. You can't. And a lot of these instances. You need to have your own sound. Design your own sound. And don't be afraid to put it the fuck out there. If you listen to Dawn of the Dead and how it's made, it's a hundred different sounds on that motherfucker. Nothing sounds the same. It's different flavors and different personalities from the rappers and from the production side of things. So if I was given advice is, yo, build your own sound, keep grinding, keep being positive, and put your shit together, organize it. But as far as like our personal journey, probably me and your personal, oh, we learned this shit on the fly. 
everything on the motherfucking fly. It's like, okay, that didn't work. That didn't work. This worked. Let's keep doing this till this doesn't work anymore. Okay, this doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Let me figure this idea out. Like, it's kind of um, trial and error. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's with everything. You know what I'm saying? But nobody in the industry, because these industry uh, motherfuckers are real shifty. Um, they're very interesting and they're cunning people. So no one's going to give you a leg up in their industry to help your ass. If they're trying to help themselves, mm-hmm. it's a very selfish business. So you have to be able to find like-minded individuals that are real enough to build with you and build relationships and network. If that was anything I could tell somebody, network, like how, how I'm talking to you, how we're on it, it's the power of networking. Mm-hmm. It's the power of social media. Because we can't meet each other. I'm in the city. You know what I mean? Like, we can't just walk in and do this, that, and the third because we're states away from each other. But through the power of networking, through the power of social media, we're able to go in ahead and help each other's platforms, help each other build. Mm. Where it's like, okay, Ken Shamps' fans can be my fans and then reverse. Because it's like, yo, we've collaborated on something. We're making moves and we're promoting together. Those things, uh, that's what's going to help you. And those are the things that I learned. But to answer the question, bro, mm -mm, no, we learned that shit on the fly and still are. Still are. But if I could depart some kind of wisdom, if I could give something to the people where it's like, yo, you're doing your own thing, yo, have that. And that goes for any business, whether it's music or you are fucking running a dry cleaners. Mm -hmm. You go by those different things, you're going to be successful. You're going to start seeing results for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you brought that up because it's like, I think either way, there is trial and error no matter what. Like, if you have a mentor or if you have no one there at all, there's still going to be trial and error. But there's a whole lot less trial and error if you have advice from people and they steer you in the right direction. But I feel like this show right here that that I'm doing was generated because of what you just said, which is I didn't really have anyone to show me that like what to do it was kind of, it's literally just been for me it's just been trying things and just seeing what works and what doesn't and i feel like starting this show was very much to give people that are where i was 5 years ago a chance to be like okay i can hear this person's story and apply it to what i'm doing now and maybe that'll help me out so it's really just to help people get further quicker than i did you know what i mean like I feel like if I went through that, I really don't want other people to do that. I want them to do better than what I did. So I'm going to reach back and be like, hey, like, here's some really helpful advice that I've had to go through this. I don't want you to have to do that. I don't want you to have to waste a lot of money, waste a lot of time with the wrong people. Like, listen to some people that I'm friends with, that I'm fans with, or that I'm fans of, and just hear their stories as well. And hopefully that will help you out and just – get you on the right path so like I I I don't know man it's like everyone's journey is completely different so it's hard to give like concrete advice anywhere obviously because like some things that work for some people work and then they won't work for others but it's really like if you have the ownership and you have control over your situation just put in the work (laughs) you know what I mean just put in the work and you will see the payoff over time and it's like that would be the only advice that I would ever give is just understand how much time it takes and just get in the habit of having repetition and build that discipline through repetition. And then you will see the results eventually. You don't get to pick when you get to see the results all the time, but you'll see them eventually. And so that's really just like, I don't know, that's just what it is. And you just have to go. And like we said, just don't stop working. So, bro. You said such a, a pivotal thing where it's like, motherfucker, this ain't no cakewalk, Joe. This ain't no cakewalk. You can't just wake the fuck up and this shit is, it is work. Mm-hmm. It is a grind. You are going to lose hours. You're going to lose friends. You're going to lose enemies. Shit, you'll lose a lot of different shit when you're pursuing this shit, whatever it is, because it's not going to happen overnight and don't be scared of the work. People look at Instagram and instant this and instant that. Yeah, it's instant. Success isn't. Mm-hmm. Even the motherfucker that looked like he blew up overnight did not blow up overnight. 
Motherfucker had to put some kind of work in. It didn't just happen that way. Something had to occur along the line where this person was putting in. So that was just music to my ears. I just had to jump in on that. I was like, yo, say that again, bro. Because people don't get that. Mm-hmm. And that, that, to me, like I said, is why this show exists, honestly, is because people got to know, too, that that will test how passionate you are about something. This isn't even just music. This is really anything like if you claim to be as passionate as you are about what you're trying to pursue, stay in it for like 5, 10, 15 years and then see and do it every single day and then see if that's really what you're saying it is. You know what I mean? Like only then you'll know if you love it that much or if you just are tired of the bullshit because it's a lot of bullshit before you get to the good stuff. You know what I mean? It's Hell just, yeah. It is what it is, but man, that was great. That was quality right there so i appreciate you sharing your side of that story that's awesome man um so i only got a few more questions for you and then we'll we'll wrap it up i i was interested to know i've seen on your instagram you do like the word of the day type little videos like little uh motivational posts so i'm interested to see like how that kind of like came about because i thought that was kind of cool can you just give a little backstory on how you started doing that oh for sure for sure um I would look at people, and and, and I'm going to go with myself first because it starts with me. Um, In the past, I've suffered from low self-esteem. I've suffered through a lot of different trauma in my life, a lot of depression, a lot of different things that I've dealt with. Um, And one thing that I always would do, because I'm a very religious person as I pray, but I also look for different things that can give me positive reinforcement. And I believe a lot of people are searching for those kinds of things in this world of negativity. Every time we're turning around, it's something negative. It's never anything positive being promoted. It's always like, oh, oh, this can kill you. This can do this. If you pick that motherfucker up, Lord knows what happened to you. It's like, what the fuck? Like, it's nothing positive going on. There's nobody that actually cares, that actually understands um, emotional trauma and psychological trauma and things. We've all been through things. So I made up in my mind, I said, well, you know what? I may not have the biggest platform, but I do have a platform to say something. To say something to somebody that it can be inspirational to them, that it can be something that they use. Because I'll use it. You know, mm-hmm. it's some days where I'll go back and I'll listen to my word of the day and say, you know what? That's good information. That's good advice right there. Maybe you need to implement that a little bit more. You're saying it, but maybe you need to implement it a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because we're all growing and we're all trying to go in and hit and become the best we can be. And I feel like with positive reinforcement, with that belief, with that kind of support, with that positive thought in your head, it can help you. Well, it can I, truly help. Absolutely, man, and it, it caught my like attention as well because like I had I had seen you posted a few dozen times since I've been following you, and I'm like, this is kind of a cool little thing that he does because like if you were an outside person and you just discovered that, like you you really appreciate it. Even if you even if the person knew nothing about you or your music, it'd just be like, like I said, it goes back to that human connection. You know what I mean? Like, and a lot of us deal with the same type of things throughout the day and throughout you know life in general. So. It's always good to get a reminder as to like, hey, someone else is kind of going through what I'm going through today. But now that I saw this, it helps me out. You know what I mean? So I commend you for doing that because that's super awesome. So keep it up, man. Definitely. I appreciate that, bro. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So if you could go back 10 years ago, maybe give yourself some piece of advice or maybe not change anything at all, what do you think you would do? Could I answer it? Both of them, because I like to answer both, and and and, and the reason why um, is I would, but I wouldn't, and this is why I say that. Um, everything happens for a reason. It does. Mm-hmm. I truly believe that. I know some people may not, but I truly believe that because everything that I've experienced has strengthened me in some kind of way and made me wiser. So. I wouldn't change anything because I wouldn't have the knowledge to depart the people. I wouldn't have the wisdom and the understanding and how to move in music if I didn't go through these bumps. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like when you kind of go back, you can offset something, if that makes sense. Where it's like a lesson that you dodge because you know it already um, isn't going to let you grow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so it's like, to me, I probably wouldn't change anything, to be honest. You know what I mean? And if I was forced to say, okay, you got to go back 10 years, you just have to. I would tell myself, yo, separate from the fake and the phony, the non-believers, the people that are going to immediately give you negativity because they're scared of doing something they tell us. Believe in you and love yourself first. Mm. And once you actually have those things and you build your own foundation, shit, you can conquer the motherfucking world, pal. I truly believe that. So if we flip it then and we say 10 years from now, where do you think you see yourself in your career and your life in general? Oh, the, to the top, to the tip top. I truly believe that Dear Mom Records is a generational thing. I feel like you haven't really heard in the last decade those kinds of rappers and that kind of production in one. I feel like you've heard maybe production that's good or rapping that's good. I don't think you've heard it together. I don't really think you have. And I feel like the offerings that we're about to put up, oh, in 10 years, we're going to be running shit. I believe that shit. You know what I mean? And it's very good to uh, manifest, too. But you got to put the work in. Mm-hmm. We're working every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're, we're doing interviews, podcasts, all these different things um, every day to expand and spread what we're doing. So in the next 10 years, I expect the Emerald Records to be the biggest uh, entertainment conglomerate. Um, and that means entertainment as far as movies, as far as um, shows and video games and all kinds of things. We have a lot of different things that we're developing and we're constantly working with new people and opening up new doors. So as a conglomerate, as a whole, I think that uh, Dear Mong Entertainment is going to be running a lot of different things, man. And I think we're going to be touching a lot of people. And I feel like in the next 10 years, I'll be able to do what I really want to do, which is have the resources to bring in creatives and i don't give a fuck what color you are if you're trying to make a difference and actually make something positive and you have talent then we're going to help and we're going to make this a thing where it's like a global thing and that's something i really aspire to do so in the next 10 years man i'm i believe that dear mom is going to change the world in a great positive way very awesome stuff man so in the more immediate future, let's say the rest of this year, maybe next year, what music can we expect from you? Like, is there anything you can reveal? I know you probably don't want to give everything away, but what can oh, we yeah, look for forward sure. to in the coming months, you think? Uh, Roll to Peru. Be ready for it. I'm dropping a fucking classic. I guarantee it. Um, Roll to Peru is going to be my project. Um, it's going to be an EP. Uh, we're already in the boot camp of the – of um, recording and writing because we basically put ourselves in a boot camp really um where we just kind of lock down start creating the hooks the ideas um the tracks uh how we're going to uh sequence it or whatever um so road to peru is going to be coming out probably in june um and and you can expect some releases from frio um that was on the tape um you can uh expect some releases from black as well and we're working on a couple other collaborations as well with a couple of the artists um, we just want to make sure that everybody gets their due um, burn you know what I mean from a project and promotional um, aspect so Road to Peru is going to be coming out in June we're probably and then that's I'm going to say maybe like two weeks dropping cover art and we'll drop the official date so for me that's going to be the project and it's going to be the project of the year man like if you love dawn of the dead and i suggest people like go check that out um it, it's doing numbers independently and it is a breath of fresh air if you're looking for a good balance you know what i'm saying of it, it's not boom bap but it's not trap you know what i'm saying it's just like that good balance of both you know what i'm saying so um Dawn of the Dead kind of set the standard of that, and that's why we named it that. It's the Dawn of the Dead. It's the Dawn of the Dead Wrong Records. It's the Dawn of a New Era. So um, Road to Peru is just going to continue that, and it's going to be bigger and better things, along with all the rest of the art. Mm -hmm. So next couple months is going to be busy, bro, for sure. I already love that name, so I'm sure I'm going to love the the music for sure. And it's coming out on the month of my birthday, so that's a little early birthday gift for me. I'm going to take that as my birthday gift. All right. (laughs) Word. We're going to make sure it's a good one, man. I'm sure it will be. I have no doubts, bro. Um, 
So do you have any final words of wisdom for the listeners today? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure, man. Always believe in yourself and, and know that self-care and self-love is the best thing for yourself. Um, until you're together, you're not going to be able to help people. I feel like some people that have good hearts and good spirits kind of get burnt out. But I'm like, listen, you got to help yourself first. Mm. You got to clean up your own house before you start trying to save uh, forest fires and shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, get out here and deal with yourself, believe in yourself, and guess what? Know that all of this shit takes time, like we were talking about. Whatever your dreams is, your aspirations, all of this shit takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. So make sure that you love yourself first, make sure that you respect yourself first, and then go on ahead and extend yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And don't give up on yourself. And if motherfuckers is negative, stay the fuck away from them. You know what I mean? And be accountable. That's another thing, too. Be accountable. If you know you fucked up, admit that you fucked up. Grow from the mistake and move on. Mm -hmm. Don't be delusional. We all hate you kind of people. I'm sorry <laughs> to break the fucking news. But we hate that shit because it's like, yo, you're that delusional? Like, you just act like this isn't a problem that you're doing, though. No. If you feel like you're doing that, shake it the fuck off, be accountable, love yourself, stay strong. It's a whole lot of shit going on, man, but you got to stay positive through it all, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Well, I got goosebumps, man. That was a great, great closer, man. You you got to get on the stage to do some, like, motivational speaking one of these days, for real, because you, you got me motivated over here, like, even more than I already <laughs> was, so... Shout out to you, bro. Sure. I, hey, listen, I would I would love that's one of my dreams, bro. Um, outside of music, I want to do a TED talk. You know what you I mean? You would kill it. You would absolutely doing. kill it, bro. Cause like this was some of the best like quality content I've had on this show for real. So that's awesome. I appreciate that, bro. Well, Champs, that's all I have for you today, man. I appreciate, you know, you just reaching out to me to begin with, sending me your music, uh, being able to have this conversation. I'm looking forward to all you got coming up. Like I said, I'll check out that new project and everything. I loved our Cowboys talk before the, you know, we started recording and everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the listeners I mean, don't even know, but, you know, we're both Cowboy fans, so if you have a problem with that, I don't know what to tell you. But we had a great conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, so, you, you need to get over it. Yeah. Um, we're America's team. We're <laughs> going to continue to be America's team. So get over yourself. <laughs> oh. Well, man, I appreciate you, bro, and I'm looking forward to, you know, reconnecting very soon. Definitely, definitely, bro. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate you. Thanks, everyone, for listening today. That was episode number 49. We'll be back this time next week for episode 50. I have a very special guest. Not going to reveal him right now, but he's someone that really inspired me when I got into music uh, seven or eight years ago, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, obviously, hit the support button on your podcast streaming platform if you want to send any funds. We'll see you then. Thank you very much.